Is this the way to the dressing room? Yes. Oh my goodness. Office, shower, bathroom. We will be in this lovely bathroom. So Gabby is doing an off-Broadway show, mm -hmm. Playwrights Horizons, yes. West 42nd Street in New York. Yes. I like was making my way through Times Square to get here. Mm -hmm for Downstate, which is a play that moved from Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago to Off-Broadway. They did a co-production in London with, uh, okay. with the National. So they went from Steppenwolf to London and then COVID hit. So this has been long anticipated for its New York City debut. Wow. Yeah, so I'm very lucky that the timing worked out where I even got to audition for it. Wait, that's time. amazing. Yeah. And so was the cast at Steppenwolf the same cast that was in London? The three women in the cast, me and Sally and Susanna, are okay. new to the cast. Okay. And the the gentlemen are coming from the previous production. They're Steppenwolf Ensemble members. Sally is too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I am in a cast of some of the most talented people I've ever been in the presence of. It's pretty exciting. I mean, <laughs> I was literally thinking about that today, that this is your off-Broadway debut. Mm -hmm. And it's this production. Yeah, trust me, I know. Like, I, like, I was just like getting so excited for you. I was like, we have Bruce Norris, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning writer. Mm -hmm. We have Pam McKinnon, Tony Award winning director. Mm -hmm. And like this incredible cast. Yeah, and when I read the breakdown, I saw Bruce Norris, I saw his name. And I had done a paper when I was in college. Like, I studied Bruce Norris. I studied Clydeborn Park. I think I did a paper in my my first semester freshman year, so it was right when I was starting college, about um, the mirrors between A Raisin in the Sun and Clyborne Park, which, yeah. And Wait, so. Wait, it's almost like you set your intention then and you didn't even realize that it was going to come to fruition. Exactly. Like, exactly. Should, we, should we read that paper? Do you have it accessible? You know what? Respectfully, <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you get on that paper? I don't know, but I did pass. I did pass. Great. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. Wait, yeah. how crazy is that? Yeah, so it was pretty exciting, pretty exciting. And when I read the play, I was blown away. Like this, this play is is so incredible. Okay, um, so yeah, wait, let's talk about that because I feel like to give a very limited summary, mm -hmm. it's about and correct me if I'm wrong, but four men who are incarcerated for sex crimes mm -hmm. and now they have served their time mm -hmm. they're out of jail and mm -hmm. they're in a group home together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then one day one of the men who was abused as a child comes and confronts one of them yes there's a confrontation um and so it just revolves around you know what happens in that time frame a day in the life of you know a picture of what their life is like at this point okay so this is like this is like a pretty like intense play. Yes. And I feel like I was doing all this research on it and Jesse Green, who was like the New York Times critic, I feel like he summed it up best when he was like, he called it a squirmy moral thrill ride of a play. Yeah, it is. It is a thrill ride. You, the most exciting part about previews so far has been hearing the audience's response. Which is what? We will be in a scene, and within 60 seconds, there will be laughter and just like, you know, such a funny moment, so sharp, so, so great. 10 seconds later, gasping, shock, like it pulls you to the extremes. And there, I mean, there are some funny, funny parts of the show too, which seems you know, crazy to think about given the topic, but that's just, you know, a so, testament to Bruce's writing. And Yeah. So I'm so curious, like, what can you tell us about your role in all of this? Or is that like top secret? I, I can give, I can give a little bit can of a rundown. Obviously, <laughs> people are going to come see you it. You have too. to come see it. Yes. Um, I play Effie. Okay. And I am a co-worker of one of the men in the group home. Okay. And we carpool to work, and so, you know, I end up spending a little bit of time with these men. And okay. I'm a witness to, you know, just their daily um, happenings. And it happens to be the same day that the victim comes to confront um, 
okay. one of the men as well. So, so I feel like I've seen some of the pictures of your transformation. Are we going to get to see? Yes, we are. This is a fresh face, no makeup. Look at that um, pretty little face. Yeah, I, and we're going to change. You're going to become a yeah. different gal. Yes, I mean it takes place in uh, the middle of Illinois. At one point, I am referred to as a little hood rat friend. So, oh, <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna get there. Wow, we can get there with enough eyeshadow and yeah. a little bit of lash glue. Yeah, we do we have? Okay, well, we'll get into that. And in these, a second. these are oh fantastic gosh, as well. Amazing. Yes. So, how much of the costume helps you transform into the character? Like, is that a big part of it? Yeah, I think that when my final look is done and I'm warmed up and I'm doing like, you know, my little pre-show stuff, when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, you're a bad bitch. Wow! Yeah. Wait, stop it. I can't wait to see that transformation. It's gonna be, that's amazing. It's fun. Okay, so what else then helps you get into that? Because it's such a different character, obviously, than like who you are. Yeah, and, and there's, there's parts of her that I do relate to on a certain level. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, well, first of all, I have a playlist. It's called Gabby, You're a Bad Bitch. And so I do <laughs> oh my to God. That. Wait, what's one of the songs on it? Um, we, ha you, we have some Lizzo. We have some Beyonce. Oh, we have some. I have Lizzo. Yeah, yeah. We have some just like pump up music. So we don't have any Taylor Swift. Though. There's no Taylor Swift. No Taylor Swift. No, 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 okay. no anti-hero. Um, Good song. Good song. It's really song. Really catchy. She's <sighs> onto something. Yeah, she really mm -hmm. is. Um, okay, so curious how your feelings about the play have changed since the first time you read it till now, and maybe how you judged or didn't judge characters at the beginning to like now that you know them more intimately, like has your perspective towards them shifted? It's a test of empathy, and these characters are so built out and every single one of them has a different journey that these my castmates are portraying impeccably i am constantly being pulled in different directions and scenes who am i who am i feeling for as soon as there's a mention of something how do i react to that um and you walk out of the show really contemplating you know what kinds of people can I empathize with and where do I draw my line and it's pretty incredible it has changed I would say since I first read the play I'm not going to give specifics but yeah. sometimes every show I'll feel for one character and it changes way. yeah yeah so the artistic director Adam that's whose brain spike out as we were walking in yeah oh okay <laughs> so he did like the whole write-up right? About yeah. like his opinion on the show. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that. He's like this idea of morality and how like if somebody wants to lead a moral life, you ultimately have to see every other person in the world as being equally real. Yeah. I mean, ultimately I have a softness for each of the characters. Um, even, you know, having committed hideous crimes it is you know like the debate can you separate the art from the artist that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and ultimately you know humans have the ability to block certain things out when they're taking in the world mm -hmm. if i something that adam touched on during our very first rehearsal is like you're constantly putting up barriers for what you choose to think about. I don't walk around the world every day thinking about the horrific events happening around the world right now. You know, war, hunger, women's rights, everything. Mm -hmm. If I thought about that constantly, I would be not be able to function on a daily <laughs> I was basis. Say, exactly. Be very depressed. Yes. Yeah, it's dismal. Yeah. And Ultimately, this show has the ability to kind of pull back the curtain and allow the audience to rip off that that blockade for two hours or so mm -hmm. and feel and experience the pull of seeing and hearing these these 
acts of, you know, sexual abuse and also seeing an ensemble of incredibly charismatic, funny, charming, passionate humans. Wow. How does that come together? Crazy. It's not like the play is offering any solutions or any advice of like how to feel. It's really just asking the questions and just posing this thing of like, you know, at what point are these people still people and we can still look at them, recognize that they ultimately fucked up in a very, very bad, dark way. And then how do you find some kind of level of forgiveness or do you? I don't know. Yes. And there's a phenomenal, phenomenal scene in act two, which I now watch from the tiny monitor backstage because it's one of my favorites, but it's a genuine discussion about these kinds of things between two characters. Um, And it's kind of stripped of a lot of the other drama and chaos that's happening during the show. And it really is just a raw, authentic conversation about these large moral questions. Yeah. Um, That's really interesting. You feel like a fly on the wall for the whole show, but in this moment in particular, it's so intimate. Yeah, it's intimate interesting it's two humans having like a discourse and uh i can't wait to see it okay okay so changing courses like a little i'm just curious like when you gabby get off the subway and you're skipping to work like literally skipping i was gonna say i can only imagine that your like little face is just like glowing (laughs) with this big smile and you're just like yay yeah but like what is it that gets you the most excited about going to a theater to perform or going to set or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. like why do you do it there is something everything that we're talking about right now Mm -hmm are things that I get to explore mm-hmm. or a job they pay me <laughs> to think about these things yeah. and to be a part of a project that does that. Mm-hmm. I find people fascinating. I, you know, if you know me, you know, I ask a million questions and yes. I'm, I'm very interested to get to know, you know, everyone's background, everyone's story and explore these kinds of things. And that's essentially what it boils down to. And the fact that I get to do that with this character, with this amazing production, with this amazing creative team. Was it intimidating then coming into a play that other people had already spent months and a lot of time working on? Or were you like, yeah, let's do it? I was shaking <laughs> in my boots. <laughs> yeah, because not only is it my like professional theater debut, it's with these yeah, we're it's not starting off insanely talented, small, okay? Insanely talented, <laughs> like, insanely talented people. Yeah, who have done the show twice before, um, and who have been the most kind, generous, encouraging, phenomenal role models for me throughout this entire process. Huh. And within, I would say, two rehearsals all of that like fear and intimidation started to melt away because I was being held by this insanely kind and talented ensemble. Um, yeah, I mean, I love that. So it was great. I mean, we see each other six days a week and come like a little, you know, like a tight knit little family. And yeah. I'm it, very lucky. Isn't it scary to think what happens when it's all over? We don't need Can't to think, think about like that it. yet, but it's like, because you really do bond, like bond yeah. and build these like tiny families with people when you're working on sets. Yeah. Because it's so intimate and it's so challenging that you're just like sharing a part of yourself that no one else ever even gets yeah. to experience. Yeah. And there's moments where it's like, okay, I just need to like take my day off and do my thing. Or, you know, if I just need to talk through something, I feel like I could go to anyone in this cast. And I have. And, you know, talk to them about what's going through my mind, working it out. Um, they've done this before and they have always been able to help ground me yeah. um, and, you know, help me chug along and, you know, find these exciting new things in the play. It's, uh, do you feel like you find exciting new things every show or do you feel like now you're in it and you just have the beats I'm and you go with con- like last night, my first scene, I came backstage and I was like, I I think I figured something out. And really? it was so cool. Yeah. And we were all like celebrating in our dressing room. We were like, yeah, because it's something I've been like toiling with. And then, yeah, it's constantly 
It's constantly. Isn't that the thing that like makes you feel so alive too? That's when you so just exciting. You're getting different things from the audience. And because I'm working with the most incredible actors ever, you're constantly getting different things from them too. Yeah. The people that have done this show more times than I can count because they've done two runs of it are still finding new things in the production. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. It's so cool. All right, sister, let's see if you're ready. I'm not gonna lie, it looks really good. It's a little, is it, it's kind of like Y2K, right? The yes. Butterflies. Great! Yeah. Okay, let's see more makeup. I'm so okay. loving this. Am I speeding you up too fast though? Like, is this too mm -hmm. early? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's almost up. Wow, where's Carissa? Really here for the oranges. <laughs> so, yes. I'm dead. This is so good. We're really here for the oranges. Yeah, so we are. Okay. Brilliant. You look fantastic. There's the look. Wow. This is the look. The look. Well, I gotta say, I'm like actually kind of like flipping out over it. It makes me look so boring. I need to like maybe take some of these things on. I mean, it, is, it is impressive. Let's I get like a little up yeah. close. Wow. Yeah. So we have the purple, we uh -huh. have the orange, we have the yellow. And the hair is in. The makeup, the jewelry, the nails, oh the my nails, gosh. The lips. Oh my gosh, you look like Effie. Mm -hmm. You are Effie. Yeah. And then I just, I throw on the costume. Great. Yeah. Thank you for doing this for me. Oh my of gosh, course. I'm so excited to see the show. Of course, I'm so excited I'm too. I'm so excited yes. for you. Yes, and it's just like, we haven't even opened yet, which is crazy. I like, know. we're still in preview, so I'm still like, you know, figuring it all, figuring it all oh, out. You and, look um, great. This is so exciting. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I'm Thank so glad.